Well, a recent study by the All India Institute of Medical Sciences funded by the ICMR has revealed that more than half of the deaths that are caused by heart attacks happen at home because people are A, not aware of the signs and symptoms and because of delay in getting treatment. So awareness about symptoms and what to do if you experience these symptoms would be key to saving lives. The AIM study says 55% heart attack deaths are reported at home. A delay in treatment is the main cause of death in such cases. Only 1 in 10 people manage to reach a hospital within the first hour of symptoms. And the inability to recognize these symptoms is the main reason. Financial constraints, according to the study, is also a big cause for, seeking, uh, for, for a delay in seeking care. Joining us uh, this afternoon, we have Dr. Rajneesh Kapoor, Vice Chairman of Interventional Cardiology, Medanta Hospital, as well as uh, Professor Dr. Sandeep Mishra, Director, Institute of Cardiology, NIMS University, Rajasthan. Thank you, doctors, uh, very much for joining us on this special broadcast. Uh, I have to ask some very basic questions in the light of these revelations that the AIM study has shown up. Uh, if I can come to you, Dr. Rajneesh, first, what are the symptoms of a heart attack? See, heart attack uh, can uh, present as many symptoms, but uh, almost 30-40% patients who actually uh, have a heart attack, they have mainly the chest pain on the left side, which is radiating towards the left arm. It can be any uh, grade of chest pain from severe, moderate, mild. So, but then we have to keep in mind that only 40-50% to 50 of patients have typical symptoms like this. Rest 50% can have very atypical uh, symptoms like some uh, jaw tightness, uh, maybe only some kind of sweating uh, or some acidity or burping. So 50% who have chest pain, they definitely uh, they become suspicious that it could be a heart attack. But other 50% where symptoms are very mild, like burping or sweating, so they uh, they there is a high chance that. In those cases, uh, it can be ignored and we may miss out an episode of a heart attack which can be fatal also. I think that the next and the most important question, Dr. Sandeep, would be what should you do if you show symptoms of a heart attack? So, uh, actually, you know, as uh, Dr. Rajneesh said very nicely, uh, classically, uh, heart attacks come as not as pain, but as uh, extreme heaviness on the chest and which can be on the uh, shoulders, it can even go to jaws and even neck. But along with that, uh, 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 there are a lot of atypical symptoms, particularly, you know, difficulty in taking breath. If somebody feels suddenly he is unable to get enough breath and complains of sweating. Along with that, even atypical symptoms can, pre can present like heart attack. So a lot of symptoms can be there of heart attack. The interesting thing is if they have difficulty in taking deep breath or difficulty in taking enough breath, and sweating. And what you need to do is immediately uh, visit a hospital and get an ECG done because confirmation of heart attack is possible through ECG. So try to get an ECG done if you can get it done at your own home or if you can visit a nearby uh, health facility where you can get an ECG uh, done and checked by a physician or a cardiologist. So that is the next step to do. Meanwhile, while you take time to go, uh, what you can do is you can take uh, maybe uh, and many people have aspirin at home. Hmm. So maybe they can break uh, aspirin tablet into two and take half sublingually and get the ECG done. And then rest things will depend on the ECG that is done. So you're saying that that half tablet of aspirin essentially buys you some time in order to be able to you know reach a medical health facility or the nearest hospital or clinic and get yourself you know, checked up and get emergency care. So I think that's really useful advice for viewers who are watching. But Dr. Rajneesh, uh, you know, a lot of times by the time symptoms are actually recognized, it's, it, it's perhaps too late for the individual who's experiencing symptoms to be able to act. In that event, I think the next important question is what can a family member, a bystander, a colleague at work, for instance, do uh, in an SOS situation if you, if you feel that somebody is experiencing these extreme symptoms? I think this is the biggest gap as for now which is happening in our society that one many patients miss out on heart symptoms and they feel that firstly this is a myth that everybody feels most of us feels that we cannot have a heart attack we remain healthy all the time this is a total myth we all are vulnerable beyond 40 years of age or even at a younger age 
it is there is no demarcation uh, as far as age is concerned uh, nowadays for a heart attack so we all are vulnerable so we should be actually suspicious if we are having any discomforts or any symptoms which we have talked about now the gap is there that e either the patient is trying to play low profile that okay i am having some symptom this is kind of acidity and it will go away so i should wait for 3 hours and see i i'll take digene i'll take some antacid pill and wait for 3 hours and if it is not resolving or if it becomes more intense then i will reach a hospital this is one hmm. two they are not even aware of the symptoms that this could be a heart attack and this is especially true with females females all the time they believe that they are protected from heart attacks and heart attack in females is a very low uh, possibility yeah, no, so no, they no. they do not take it seriously hmm. so any family member or anybody in the vicinity if they find that patient is having such symptoms where he is taking his hand to the left uh, chest or he is holding uh, the uh, his or her arm left arm there is a possibility that this could be a heart attack there is a high uh, chance that high uh, situation uh, that we should make that person aware right. or reinforce in them that this could be a heart attack please let's go to a hospital and get a ecg done hmm. yeah you know i think if even if you can't differentiate between the symptoms of a heart attack or or what could be you know other symptoms there's still no harm in going into the emergency of a hospital or a clinic and getting yourself checked out you know best case scenario you're just ruling out the worst for yourself so i think that's extremely important as well uh, but dr mishra you know who is most susceptible to heart diseases because prevention is better than cure one has heard but i think you know given the fact that this aim study talks about the fact that delay in getting to a hospital not understanding symptoms i think there's a larger question about heart health here as well who is more susceptible to heart diseases today you know we are hearing of 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 not just older people not just men but even younger people and even women who were previously not predisposed to such conditions actually dying of heart attacks no uh, very good question and actually you are absolutely right that uh, while heart attacks initially were thought of older age but now they are hung, uh, occurring in even younger and younger population so i think uh, what we need to understand is number 1 male are more susceptible uh, and female who are still menstruating or having their periods are little bit protected so far as the uh, risk of heart attack is concerned unless the lady is smoking and is on oral contraceptive pill if she is still menstruating the risk in ladies are less now coming to men people who have some risk factors for heart disease like those who are smoking smokers those who have diabetes those who have pressure hypertension problem those who have uh, problems high cholesterol levels particularly high ldl cholesterol those who are very anxious uh, have got lot of stress those who do less physical activity and those who are obese or overweight these are the people especially men in younger age and women in older age who are more prone to develop heart attacks um dr rajneesh last question to you you know what regular tests or monitoring should be done and from what age say uh, you know in order to be able to gauge things like high cholesterol uh, it's very interesting because dr sandeep talks about these as markers for you know somebody who could potentially develop heart related complications but how many of us are actually getting tested for these things so what are these tests how often should they be done and at what age should one perhaps get oneself regularly checked up yeah rishika so if you give me a little bit more time so i want to emphasize on the fact that you know we have seen many sudden uh, cardiac deaths happening in last one year many celebrities were losing yes. which we lost because of sudden cardiac death now that sudden cardiac death didn't happen in a day so they were actually harboring the heart blockages for quite many years and that literally progressed over the time and some time it erupted and led to a sudden cardiac death so yes if we become aware in time everybody i would say beyond the 40 years should have a screening test which are very simple they are not very costly also it it includes the fasting sugars the fasting lipid profiles the the stress test the stress echo or the tmt test so if these tests are done at least we have some clue rather i go one step forward 
I say that CT coronary angiogram should be the, our, our threshold uh, should be low in getting the CT coronary angiogram in patients who are more vulnerable, who have more risk factors. And if the CT coronary angiogram is normal, then the duration of getting a CT coronary angiogram should be five years, once in five years. Okay. But if it is showing 50-60% blockages, it should be more. Even every two years, one should have a CT coronary angiogram. Right. And what to tell you, we do ourselves. You know, we have a family history of heart disease. I do on myself. Every two years, I check the CT. So if it's clean arteries, then it gives an extra layer of security sure. that we know that uh, we are more vulnerable or less vulnerable should we add some drugs which would actually mitigate the chances of heart attack in future like statins like aspirin you know so that gives an extra layer of security how to actually escape right. uh, from more uh, vulnerability to a less vulnerability phase I think very important point that you raised, doctor, about uh, vulnerability and, you know, those who have a predisposed condition in terms of a family history. So if anybody in your family has, God forbid, suffered a heart attack or has a history of uh, heart disease, then you are perhaps more susceptible, irrespective of the, you know, the fact that you may be actually younger and fitter. So those are people who are particularly susceptible and should get themselves tested. One, it's thing, an one thing I like to add, Rishka, here, I feel in today's era where the stress has gone beyond a point you know the more vulnerable age group now is 30 to 45 years where right. everybody is in their prime of their jobs everybody is running fast everybody is trying to meet expectations of family or sure. job everything rather after 50 the the pace of life is getting slowed sure. down your your kids are out your stresses will be low so this is the more vulnerable phase from 30 to 50 years nowadays right uh, Dr. Kapoor and Dr. Mishra, thank you both very much for joining us. One sincerely hopes that viewers who you know, watch this broadcast have a slightly better idea of what are the do's and don'ts and when you should, in fact, take your symptoms seriously, what are the symptoms and who should really be getting themselves regularly checked up and monitored for potential heart diseases. It's a story we'll continue to track here on NDTV.